Uh, what's your overall take, uh, Jennifer, in terms of what you thought about the presentation and the impact it's going to have in terms of overall and streaming and specific to NBC Universal? I thought, um, thanks for having me, David. I thought they showed up, and they showed up and showed why they will be a relevant player here. I think that they did a very good job of articulating how this ad-supported premium content is, as they called it, kind of a white space for, for the streaming world, and they certainly have the content catalog to compete effectively. Um. And what do you make of the targets? I mean, in terms of both subscribers, it does appear it's going to be a domestic service for at least uh, the time being. Um, are they being realistic in terms of who they can reach? And are they being realistic in terms of the uh, ARPU they're seeking, given there's only going to be five minutes of ad load per hour? Yes, I think both, and I heard the prior speaker speak, uh, say this, I think the kind of the buzz coming out of that conference from both buy and sell siders was that the guidance they offered was extremely conservative, especially the revenue number. I mean, to put it in perspective, the 2024 outlook they gave for revenue from Peacock is 2% of their total revenue, 30 to 35 million customers, given how many eyeballs and customer relationships and touch points they have, I think is extremely doable. Given their focus on advertising here, do you think that this is an attractive platform for advertisers? Yes, I do. And I thought that, you know, versus some other streaming kind of coming out parties we've seen here, I thought Comcast did a very effective job of kind of connecting the dots and the math around the advertising opportunity. I think with a targeted ad of five minutes per hour, um, you know, you're going to have a captive audience and I think that, you know, and they alluded to this, that that will offer a premium pricing from these advertisers. And certainly they announced a, a very blue chip name of initial sponsors. And my sense is that there were more incoming calls to get those sponsorships than outgoing ones made by Comcast. Hey, Jennifer, you point out uh, Linda Yaccarino, our, uh, our parent company's uh, chair of ad sales, uh, pointing to a study that said 80 percent of people will choose a TV service with advertising for a lower price. So I guess the question is, why isn't that done more often? Good question. I think that's the opportunity that Comcast sees as, again, this white space area to target. Now, of course, Hulu does have advertising and people are paying for that. But I think this is this the targeted, the time amount of advertising really can't be emphasized enough because it's. It's a small five minutes in an hour. It's not. I think in, the, in that case, advertisers don't see that um, the consumer will think of advertising as ir an irritant, for lack of a better word. And I think that's the opportunity they have seen. Yeah, I would add to that, by the way. And speaking of Brian Roberts and Steve Burke yesterday, prior to the presentation, they were amazed that nobody else had moved into that space, so to speak, that white space. At least they feel that they've identified Jennifer. Uh, over these last 18 months to two years that they've been trying to figure out uh, exactly what to do. And they were relieved that they sort of feel like it's still um, available to them right now in, in, in terms of what they, what they can do there. Um, do you believe, though, overall, that it will help to erode the existing subscriber base amongst, uh, amongst Comcast or NBC cable network customers? I mean, that is the needle they have to thread. I, I, but I think what Comcast has effectively done, and X1 is a clear example of it, is kind of have more touch points for that customer base that they have. And I think Peacock is going to be yet another example of that. So I think, you know, for the people who have not cut the cord, and, you know, that's still a fairly large number, they will also get this service for free. And you will, you know, it could be almost an add-on to those services. But I think, you know, I think they said this is where the world is going is streaming and that train has left the station and they they have a role here, especially from the content that they already own. The challenge that they had before this is a lot of the content that they own was being monetized and profited by other streaming services. So this corrects yeah. that.